It is day three now of sometimes powerful testimony in the landmark civil trial targeting Big Pharma in the opioid, op opioid crisis, this in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, really emotional testimony yesterday from the father of a football star who died from an opioid overdose. Just take a moment to listen to Craig Box describe how his son Austin, who was just 22 years old, died. We heard from so many parents across the that have lost children in similar circumstances, that the same story as us, had no idea, had no clue about the prevalence of these drugs. Oh, Craig Box joins us now. I am so sorry. We are so sorry for your loss. We know that no words can, can ease your pain, but there is a reason, sir, that you took that stand, and there's a reason you're here with us this morning. Tell us about your son. Uh, a young man who your wife calls a silent sufferer in this crisis. Well, thank you for having me. Yes, um, well, first of all, about my son. Um, he was a special young man. Uh, he stated he was a tremendous athlete, but a better person, a very kind person. Uh, people gravitated to him, had a great sense of humor, charisma, and uh, a lot of character, and, and so, uh, being a University of Oklahoma football player when he died, um, there was some notoriety and, and began to shed a light on this problem. Mm. Mm. We're looking at pictures there now uh, of him, and you could see that energy in his eyes. Uh, as you stood there and testified in a case against the company Johnson & Johnson, I, I wonder what blame you place on the company uh, and companies, frankly, who manufacture these drugs and the way that they marketed these drugs. What, what role do you believe that played in your son's addiction? Well, first of all, let me state, I mean, my wife and I and the family never sought to blame anybody in particular. Uh, our, as a lot of people, we've learned a lot over the years. When my son died, this problem was not as well-known or in the forefront as it has become in the last couple of years. And what we've learned is that uh, opioid companies um, realize the addictive science behind it, realize the addictive qualities of some of these opioids, and as well as the science of the human brain, and targeted uh, the public and by marketing to doctors and pushing it as a safe pain management pill without, in our opinion, necessarily disclosing all the potential mm. addictive qualities of these drugs. They, the labeling says could be addictive, but it's much more insidious than that. It's mm. uh, what we've learned is that a, a healthy percentage of the population can become addictive by taking these opioids uh, just by taking maybe five or six pills. And some of, some of that is due to the strength of uh, the base ingredients of the opioids uh, mm -hmm. that are much stronger and became stronger over the years with the knowledge of the drug companies, including Johnson & Johnson, Jensen, and the others. Hmm. I know yesterday during your testimony in the cross-examination by Johnson & Johnson's attorney, they asked you, you know, sir, do you know if your son had any opioids from this company in his system? And you answered them, no, I didn't know. But, the, but, there, but you still wanted to be up there. What is, what is the reason for your testimony, and what is your hope at the end of the day with this trial and so many that are set to come across the country? Well, the main reason, is, as I've stated, is, uh, is to put a face on um, that this affects everybody. I mean, for years and even now, there's a stigma associated with drug abuse. And what the opioid crisis has revealed is it doesn't it doesn't target just the poor or the uneducated um, it, it reaches across all classes uh, occupations and, and and it's clear if you look at statistics as well as how the number of deaths and the people who have died over the years that they didn't, the pills and the drug companies do not discriminate who can take these and who they want mm -hmm. to take these. And they've just mm -hmm. flooded our, they flooded our nation for years with these pills. Yep. 
Well, yeah. Craig, listen, it's a story we take seriously on this program. I, I think both Poppy and I have come, come to know people like you. Met some folks who've had losses like you, and our hearts go out to you. But, but thank you so much for taking the time. We know yeah. that's no easy thing. Craig, thank, thank, thank you very much. And, and I, I would just like to note that, uh, that you and your wife have started a foundation in Austin's name. It's called the Austin Box 12 Foundation. So for anyone who wants to know more, parents, listen up. This could be your child. No one is immune. Uh, they can go there and take a look. Craig, we're so sorry. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.